Hey guys, so it's finally here. I can finally review Liz's J3. Getting her job three was one of the most miserable freaking things I've ever had to do. We're talking tens of thousands of multi, of multi coins, like at least two Vita runs. You know, it, there's a lot of shit to do. You also have to be able to clear the Snow Witch EX and clear out all the missions in that, clear out all the missions in Rebecca's EXs, and then do one final stage, which I'll mention later. But here it is, Liz in all her glory after all of that. And it turns out, she's pretty good. <clears throat> so, let's just hop right into this and take a quick peek at her Kaigen. So, Liz did not get Kaigen for the longest time. I think she might have been the last one to get Kaigen, actually. But her Kaigen isn't that bad. Uh, obviously, you'll go into Gate 1 for the HP and just raw stats. Her Gate 2 is going to give her 25% magic attack, 30% max duels passive, an additional 15% agility. And this is a big deal, as I'm sure you noticed my Elizabeth's agility, or my Elizabeth's speed right now is at 175, which is a far cry from her like 100-ish that she had before. Um, <clears throat> so your uh, Lesper Gate is completely optional. It's 50% HP and plus 20 water, all damage. I mean, it's an okay leader skill. But nowadays in Japan, I value offense more than I value HP, mainly because you really need to kill enemies that have like 100 or 150,000 HP. And HP doesn't kill enemies, damage does. Um, obviously, you still want to have some HP on your leader skill, otherwise you're just going to get murdered by like the 4 to 5k AoEs that are being they're just flying around. But um, <clears throat> it's not a bad gate 3 per se. It's a good it's a good leader skill. It's just not ideal in this day and age for the current meta where it stands at least in my opinion i mean it is only two sins so it's not like it costs that much so your gate four is going to also be for raw stats and it's going to give you even more magic attack 45 to be exact um as well as 60 damage versus lust multiplier and you will notice that elizabeth's magic is kind of low so 45 magic attack is actually a pretty big deal if you're willing to foot the cost it is worth doing this gate um i'm not willing to foot the cost right now as i have better water mages at least in my opinion i don't think i need lisbeth's gate for but if i ever have extra resources i might come back and max this later her wrath gate on the other hand um poses a bit tougher of a question so i really don't like the skill that her wrath gate has but i see its value so i will show you what skill this exactly is when i go and uh showcase her however um for now you're just gonna have to uh trust me on this one so it's going to create some panels <clears throat> and when you step in the panels it is going to heal you for 1000 hp as well as um give you i believe 10 jewels and then the panel will disappear when you get her upgraded version from her gate 5 it's going to kill you for 1500 hp as well as give you 25 jewels and then the panel will disappear um it'll also give you auto jewel rate which should give you a, a turn of roll a turn of jewelry gen and it should only be one turn of it but <clears throat> I'm sorry. I misspoke there. It's going to give you the auto jewel regen, but it's going to give you a fixed rate of 25 jewels. So if you step in the panel, it's just a straight 25 jewels with the gate 5, only 10 with the gate without the gate 5. Um, <clears throat> I think this uh, particular skill is kind of situational. Um, I can definitely see its value because the AoE of panels that you put down is relatively high. So you'll be able to get a lot of jewels out of this. However, uh, once again, two horns and two sins is a relatively steep cost to pay. Um, <clears throat> but for, once again, both of these gates, if you really want your Elizabeth to shine, are probably going to be worth it. So let's hop down here and take a look at her gear and Nenso. So Elizabeth received a Nenso along with Edgar. And it's a great Nenso, actually. So your base stat's going to be HP, obviously, as well as the group skill is going to be HP. And this group skill is going to encompass all of the main characters um, that are available right now, at least. 
And for the next group, it's actually going to be Elizabeth's group, and it's going to give you magic resistance and cast time ratio down. So magic resistance is kind of meh, but cast time down is obviously a great asset to her kit, as most of her skills do have cast times. When it is at max limit break, she will also get 20 area attack, which is basically just 20 damage modifier. Um, the next group is Edgar, so I'm not really going to go over it, but if we uh, ever go over Edgar, uh, maybe someday I'll do it. Um, as for the next <clears throat> group, it's going to include Elizabeth and Edgar, and it's going to give you all status resist, which is the majority of what you see there, the 16s. But it's also going to give you uh, agility. And it'll give you strong versus water and strong versus fire. Now, obviously, Lisbeth does not have any thunder skills, so she won't be able to use the strong versus water. However, she does benefit from the strong versus fire modifier, which is fire exploit, or as they sometimes call it in uh, global fire racism. When it is at max limit break, you will get one additional uh, turn of buff duration, which is a pretty big deal for Edgar. And it can be an okay deal for uh, Elizabeth, but it's not as impactful. And finally, we'll go down here to the very bottom. There is a vision ability. And um, <clears throat> it's going to give you just a passive 15 to thunder, water, and dark all damage. And when you're at max limit break, that gets upgraded to 30. Um, obviously, it's just raw damage, so <clears throat> nothing super special. However, the VCR from this is very special, and it is this uh, bottle of what I assume to be alcohol, and it's going to give you 20 to your healing modifier, plus 1 jump, 13 agility, and 20 to jewels obtained. Now, the plus 20 to healing modifier is a big deal for Elizabeth, as well as the 13 agility, as that's the best agility gear that she can wear as well as having decent jewels obtained and having jump to help her get around the map. <clears throat> and the healing modifier Elizabeth's kit is based around a lot of healing, so having healing modifier is a great thing to have. It'll also give you an AoE buff around you, which will give your uh, allies 30 to all stats except agility, which it'll give 10%. And it will give Elizabeth 70 to all stats except for agility, which she'll get 15%. So this is a relatively nice buff. It lasts for three turns. It's definitely worth using as um, you can actually get her damage up decently high with it. Um, what about other gears she might want to use? So <clears throat> the big one that I think sticks out more than anything else is the Sophia Nenso. And the reason I like the Sophia Nenso so much is because one, <laughs> she's like the only one who can use it effectively other than like maybe Sophia herself. Um, but two, it has it comes with an innate cast time ratio down. Now the cast time down for is on the Nenso itself, which means these will stack, and getting minus twenty cast time ratio is a good deal. Um, the rest of the stats don't matter as much. It has healing plus twenty again, but since that's redundant since we already have that on our kit. Missile resistance plus ten. It's nice to have, but it's not super impactful. And silence resistance is always nice to have on a mage as obviously if you're silenced you can't cast any of your magic now it does have a vision ability on it which is going to give you delay resistance countdown resistance and as well as 15 percent agility for two turns and this will be in an aoe around you uh a five diamond around you so you can use this on your allies to prevent uh modifications to their uh ct or their prevent them from getting delayed this is very useful on some maps, especially some of those maps that have like archers that like to like hit you with slows and stuff from across the map. Uh, super useful for that kind of thing. A little niche uh, weapon ability, but it's still nice to have. I mostly use it for the cast time down ratio, and obviously I have a healing setup right now. We will go into a damage setup later. And I do suggest running some kind of regen on her. Uh, she doesn't necessarily need regen. You could always just run more HP or run some other kind of support gear. Uh, other support gear that you might uh, find interesting and at this point the um, HP gear and the uh, Sophia VCR are obviously interchangeable only the VCR from the Elizabeth Edgar Nenso is not so uh, I've already been over this piece of gear but this is the third anniversary gear and it's going to give you three 33% rate pull uh, rate heals 
super useful gear to have, and with all of the healing modif uh, modifier that Elizabeth has, it's even more effective in her hands than it would be in most, uh, very similar to Kasumi. Uh, obviously, the magic modifier from the Fiona VCR is always going to be a good option. Um, <clears throat> so you might notice I have this Winter Scarf on Elizabeth right now, and yes, that does say minus 10 speed, you're not reading that wrong, but it also has 100 knockback resistance. And the reason I like this piece of gear so much um, <clears throat> is because the uh, gear lets you switch places with an ally. It's basically a Chronomancer switch, uh, but you don't need to have a Chronomancer in the map. And I was using this to get, uh, get Elizabeth out of trouble to pre prevent her from dying in some of the EXs. Um, it's a nice piece of gear to have. Uh, I just thought it pointed out. Nice little utility gear there. Um, obviously, it'll be super helpful if your Elizabeth is in a bad situation to get her out of it. Um, specifically with regards to farming her J3, not necessarily using it on her J3. Uh, obviously, the Fujika VCR, you guys know what that does by now. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that she is capable of using the um, Kasumi VCR which has a flat 500 HP, as well as 15 healing modifier. Obviously, you don't care about the healing modifier, but a flat 500 HP gear without having to use like your Tumbo VCR. Um, if, if you want to have your Elizabeth in the back seat and you don't want to like mess around with equipping gear and stuff on her, the Costume VCR is a great option, as not many units can use it. Only the MCs can and Costume herself. Um... I'm not going to go over this piece of gear because uh, Global doesn't have it. People in Japan know what it is. Uh, so this is another piece of support gear, and it's basically going to gimp all of Elizabeth's damage and exchange, giving her some uh, count manipulation resistance, as well as an additional, I believe, I want to say 25% HP. Um, basically, it's like equipping a second HP item, and it works because it works as a buff instead of a base stat. And if you really want damage, you could always equip the Water Ring from Neo Vita if you manage to climb that high. And she can, and since she's Lesbury, she can technically use the uh, Yoris VCR, but you're probably never going to use that. <laughs> but those are more damage-centered options. Anyways, um, let's take a look at her abilities here. So you're probably going to want to run her job, uh, her unique, I'm sorry, her job three main and sub. Both of them have good skills on them that are worth using. It's not like Edgar, where you might want to run his job plus sub for the charge up instead of the J3. Um, let me quick pull up her job here, because for some reason my tab got closed. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but you have good skills on both your main and your sub on her uh, Snow Witch job, which is what I'm going to call it from now on if I remember to. Uh, also, I kind of like her reactive from her Snow Witch job, as it's um, one of those reactives that has a proc chance of happening, but once it does, it has a rate heal that it'll heal Lisbeth for. And because Lisbeth has such great healing modifier, um, it should heal her for additional HP. And this also means that you might not have to use regen, uh, and she can stay healthy enough if you're lucky. Now, obviously, you're going to want to run your... Um, Upgraded Kaigen passive if you have it. You're gonna want that speed for sure. The magic and max jewels are nice to have as well. And I run the HP and healing modifier from her Snow Witch job because it has this is 50 healing modifier. 50 healing modifier is a lot. Um, there is another one in here if I could find it. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Yes. So if you want a more offensive option, you could always use a passive from the bishop. However, this is only 15% magic. Uh, it's not big. I mean, it is something. It'll help you do more damage, but Lisbeth, I think, is better uh, as a healer than she is as a damage dealer. And 50 healing modifier, like I said, that's a lot of healing modifier. So let's go ahead and hop into the map here. <laughs> So I'm going to be using a uh, Merlinus Leader skill today with Elizabeth.
I kind of wish Elizabeth was uh, flying on her broom in the map instead of just standing, but we can't get all of our wishes. Alright, so. <clears throat> I'm going to do this in two parts. One, I'm going to showcase the skills themselves, and then I'm going to show you what kind of extra damage you can do with them. Uh, so, let's start with the very first skill. It is just a rate heal. I think it's just a rate heal. Why is that the same? Or is it based... Uh, no, this is not a rate heal. That is my bad. This is actually just a normal heal. But it's actually a pretty good heal, and I just realized that I forgot to turn animations back on, so let's redo this quick. I've come too far in the video to restart. At least without a big mistake. Just turn those right on. And try this again. Yeah, the right heal is actually on her sub, not her main. So, this is actually a really good value for a standard heal these days. <clears throat> and next up, we have her attack. And this is going to be her main attack. The attack on her sub doesn't really do much damage. She's also a little faster in map at 181 speed, which is nice. Alright, so. Earlier I mentioned Gate 5, and this is the Gate 5 skill. As you can see, this is a relatively big AoE. And now we have lots of panels here. So I'm just going to wait one turn here with Merlis. As you can see, she gained a jewelry gen, and the panel disappeared. And this will stay true no matter where you are. <laughs> and then Merlinus gained the 25 jewels, however, the jewelry gen just fell off. However, you can refresh it by moving over to the next square. And this means that you have several turns where you can just collect jewels with your party. Which is actually pretty nice as it lets you move around. It's not like you're centered on one square like you are for Hisham. But also it's kind of a little more awkward if you know what I mean. It forces you to move which means that the benefit to Hisham squares always being in one place and not disappearing immediately is you can stay in one place and launch attacks. And you don't lose as much of your CT between turns because you didn't make a move. In this particular instance you're giving up the ability to move around. For the fact that you have to move around, if you know what I mean. So moving on. We have one more trick on the main kit. And it is this massive 120 jewel buff. <clears throat> and that is going to buff your HP by 50%. And it'll also buff your magic modifier by 100. Uh, this is not like doubling damage. However, it is a lot of additional damage. So moving on to the sub kit. We have a rate heal. And as you notice, this does actually heal a little less. However, as you can see, the range on this thing is massive. I mean, we got what? Five, six squares away, I think. Might be six squares of distance. That's a huge distance, which means Elizabeth can hang back and give out some pretty nice heals from very far away. Um, obviously, the rate heal is only 15%. This isn't a huge amount of HP, but it is still nice to have. And moving on to the next one, this, I think, is the, one of the biggest and nicest things in her kit. So she still has uh, jewel donation. And when she donates jewels, she can give whoever she gave jewels to a cast time ratio down of 33 or one third for three turns. Which means that whatever mage unit you used it on can now cast their skills even faster than they could before.
And it looks like I need to gather some jewels as I've already used up a ton. And for the next skill, as you can see, this also has a uh, relatively large range. And that's nice, especially for what it's used for. So this is a uh, apparently a TP. I actually didn't know it was a TP. This is the first time I used the skill. So it appears to be a 5-diamond TP centered around yourself, which is going to cleanse status ailments from your party members. So if it, for anyone here who knows the Holy Brawler uh, cleanse on their sub kit, uh, this is the same thing, just the larger AOE and a TP, which is actually super nice. That's going to help Elizabeth a lot getting around the map. It has five charges and at 30 jewels each, it's actually relatively inexpensive considering her uh, rather large uh, jewel pool. And once you have your um, gate five max, it'll be much easier for Elizabeth to get some of her gems back. And for our final trick, well, actually, second to final trick, we have one more attack here. And it doesn't do as much damage as the other AoE, but it does still do damage. Finally, we have the VCR ability. <clears throat> so, you still do have your um, AoE heal from her master ability. And this 80 jewel one here, here is from the Sophia VCR. And this 50 jewel one here is from the uh, Elizabeth Edgar VCR. And it's going to just be a buff around you. So. What kind of damage differences can we do with this kind of stuff? Because obviously, she's based around healing and buffing for the most part. She only has one attack, however. She is still capable of doing somewhat respectable damage with relatively little setup. As well as being able to boost her uh, allies' damage a lot, obviously. <laughs> so... Just wait here for a turn, because we want to get a base value of what we're capable of doing. So, <clears throat> without any buffs at all, Merlin is going to do 9.8k to a fire unit. And we're actually going to drain dimension this uh, wind unit here. So, we will start also showcasing what Elizabeth can do. She can do uh, 5,200 damage, which in an AoE to fire units for a main character at this point is actually pretty nice. <laughs> but uh, we can do better than that. So let's go ahead and buff up her stats a little. Now Merlinus isn't going to really benefit from this as Drain Dimension is better. But Elizabeth will get a lot out of it. And now we can go ahead and buff up our magic modifier. And I can go ahead and grab some, my drain dimension back again. And I, I think I forgot to show what she's capable of doing with the drain dimension, so I'll have to remember to do that afterwards. So first off, let's see what Elizabeth can do. So she's doing almost 12, she's doing 11,000 damage now. Which is actually pretty good, all things considered. Now remember, my, my Nenso is not max limit break, and I'm not running a damage setup. I'm running a support setup right now. So I'll switch out to a damage setup after this, and I'll show you what she's capable of doing solo. So Merlinus, however, is doing almost 22,000 damage now. I'll show you what you can do next time. 
So let's go ahead and switch out here. And I'm going to switch over Elizabeth to a more offensive setup. Ooh, I hear thunder. wonder if that'll show up on the video or not. Should hurry up and finish this. So we'll switch out for the water ring. I'll have to remember to give that back to my all mess later. And just for shits and giggles, we're going to switch over to a pure magic attack item. Just to upper damage and say, screw, uh, who needs HP anyways when you when you can just do more damage, right guys? And I need to remember to show off what Merlinus could do before. So Merlinus is doing almost 22,000, I believe, with her uh, all those buffs. Which, honestly, in this day and age, isn't as good as it used to be, to be honest. <laughs> so, Merlinus... We'd be only be doing about 15,000 damage otherwise. So, Elizabeth's buff upped her damage by about 7,000 on a single cast. And remember, that's going to last for three turns. And also, you have to remember, Merlinus has two-turn drain dimension. And actually, she might actually have four turns of Elizabeth's buff now that I think about it. So, she could probably get two major attacks off with two drain dimensions and be fine. Also, that's a really nice animation, how she hops on her staff and kind of flies around in a circle. I kind of like that. So, the verdict is about 13,000. That's not too bad. Um, I was doing calculations in Huji, and I think I can get it up to 15,000-ish under ideal circumstances with a bunch of Nensos piled up on her. Um, but this is pretty good for today. You do have to remember, Elizabeth is a free character, and she is not a 5-star, she's a 4-star unit technically, so her stats do suffer. I also do not have her gate 4 or her gate 5 finished, so there is actually still more room to improve here. Um, while she might not necessarily be maxed out, what we can say is that Elizabeth is in a way better spot than she was just a couple months ago, and also has a way better outfit. I don't know if this outfit is ever, ever outfit is ever going to come to global though. So maybe if you guys are lucky, you'll get it. Uh, unfortunately, because it was a Japanese movie exclusive, I cannot say for certain whether you will get it or not. What I can say, however, is that Elizabeth is actually pretty powerful now. Um, I am relatively satisfied with the result. Um, I have to say that if I had the choice to farm it again, I. <laughs> farming it was pretty miserable um <clears throat> if you guys in global want to get prepared i highly suggest saving all of your mp coins forever at this point like just don't use your mp coins just save them just save them forever you need like tens of thousands you need to buy 60 of these materials and if you're running the uh ssm quests in um if you're running the SSM quests in your MP, you're getting 100 coins per run, which means that you need 10 runs of your SSM MP runs to get one material, and you need 60 of them. That's a lot of MP, and you need that per protagonist right now. We only have uh, two of them. We only have Edgar and, D and Elizabeth's job threes. However, if the other protagonists follow suit, expect to do this a hell of a lot more. Uh, farming their uh, respective normal quests to get the material is highly impractical unless you're a mega whale, as not only are you going to need hundreds of leaves to do so, you are also going to need tens of thousands of skip tickets. And I literally mean tens of thousands of skip tickets. You will need that many. Not just 10,000, tens of thousands. It is absolutely ludicrous how over the top this whole thing is. It's I just don't understand why they felt the need to make it this freaking difficult. Because it's like, the, the amount of farming I had to do to get the result that I got, I, I don't feel like I got returns on the, my time investment, if you know what I mean. I mean, don't get me wrong, Elizabeth is good and she looks great in her outfit. But, like... 
am I going to use her a lot? Probably not. Um, I don't necessarily see her finding a major place on my team. Unless, I, for some odd reason, I need to do more damage with a magic modifier. In which case, she's the best person for the job. Now, one thing we do want to keep in mind is that Elizabeth does have a little bit of potential if combined with Leticia. Because if you combine the two, Leticia can give you the magic attack to your magic modifier. And buff up your allies even more. So that way someone like Merlinus would be able to hit significantly more damage well maybe not significantly because she does drain dimension but uh units like ultima would be able to up your damage as well uh also if you run ultima as an enchanter you can up your uh, fire exploit or you could just run him as like your sage main and enchanter sub and just you know get a little bit of water modifier out of the deal to get your damage up just a little bit higher um but now it's like, how many buffers are you running in the same party? You, you gotta get someone in there to do damage. Um, I will say that it is nice, however, that she is a Water Lustberg unit, as Water Lust is actually a relatively common archetype that I can use. Um, there's plenty of Water Lustberg units that she can fit into a team with to make it super easy. Um, other than that, I really don't have much else to say about Lisbeth. You know, she's come a long way since her days in whatever the hell, like, magic school she went to. But, um, she turned out alright. Um, considering what they had to work with, they did a pretty good job. So, thanks for watching as always, guys. Uh, th another thanks again to the uh, guy who dropped me that code for the Lisbeth skin, which is the only reason I did this. <laughs> I kept telling myself, I gotta do it because someone gave me the skin and that's kind of what got me through it. I'll probably do this once more for Tina if she has the same setup, but I really don't see myself doing it for any of the other main characters as it's just too much work for one unit that's not even a top tier unit. And don't kid yourself, Elizabeth is not top tier. She's good. She's very good, but she's not top tier. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.